Hi there, Lime Macedo Sweeney from LimeMacedo.com. And it was Lime Macedo today. The date is 23rd of August 2016. Time right now is 10.15 in the night. Okay. Uh, today, I just wanted to speak to you about Toastmasters and the children's club, that is the Gavaliers that they have. Okay. And I'm going to, this is going to be a rant, a complaint about Toastmasters and the Gavaliers. And here's my dog. My doggy. My doggy. Love me. Come here, Nolly. Come here. Oh, all my dogs are here. All my dogs are here. They like to be pampered. Okay, so you guys go and play. Go and play. Go, go, go. Okay. So today is going to be a rant about Toastmasters and the Cavaliers. Okay. Seriously, it's going to be a bloody rant. So if you are dedicated Toastmaster or if you're very passionate about Toastmasters, I seriously suggest you go and watch this video. Okay. First and foremost is. You know, the, the thing about Toastmasters and the World Championship of Public Speaking, okay? First and foremost, is I find this title ridiculous. How can you call someone the World Champion of Public Speaking when all you do is by heart a seven-minute speech? Seven-minute speech around, uh, let's say, 600 or 700 words. You by heart it, you practice all the gestures, you do this ridiculous gestures, and you have the jokes that people simply laugh even though it's not funny. You you put props which are not uh, appropriate. You do strange body language. You move one side of the stage to another side of the stage. Sometimes you jump up and down and you stand on chairs and you try to make people laugh. You know, the six emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, disgust, surprise, fear, all these emotions, everything else. And then... A speech which you take three times over the period of, you know, club level, area level, division level, district level, inter-district level, then regional and international. All these next seven levels, you just repeat three different speeches that you're by hearted and then you become the world champion of public speaking. It's just a dummy title, man. It's it's just a, it should, the title should be world champion of a seven minute speech. Seven minute speech which can be crafted by anyone. All you got to do is deliver. And how I know it is because... I script write for most of these guys. Okay, so the first one is this world champion of public speaking is this bullshit. It's a bullshit title. It should be world champion of a seven minute speech. Most of these guys are average or uh, average speakers or they are mostly professional speakers who make a living out of speaking and the rest of them, you know, get their speeches written by someone else. So they don't actually become like world class speakers. Most of them are not even part of uh, the NSA, National Speakers Association, or they don't, you know, you never hear about them after they win. So that's number one. The second thing is this, this, this business of drama, this whole bloody thing of this Toastmaster speeches is nothing but staged drama. It's ridiculously exaggerated, you know, immature, stupid, irritating drama. My mother died. <laughs> My father died. I got cancer. <laughs> And then I succeeded. I will achieve this. Ooh, and they crack stupid jokes in between. So in seven minutes, they try to do all these. The pause. And then the gesture. Man, come on, listen. This this is all become a drama. You will never get a Martin Luther King, a Gandhi, uh, a Ronald Reagan, a Kennedy. Uh, the people who have inspired a generation. They will never be a Toastmaster because... Toastmaster speeches are gimmicks. Okay, that's a second second point. The third one is the absolute atrocious, unforgivable nonsense that they are teaching children. See, the thing is, this Gavalier system is supposed to um, motivate children, but now they are having these competitions where children have to buy other speeches. You know, one of these kids came to me, and uh, he said, "I want to win the championship and all that." Fine, I said, "Okay." Uh, and the mother was telling me, "He's a very good speaker. He's fantastic. He's amazing and all that." I said, okay, fine. And he was very proud. He was like this. So I said, show me a speech. His speech was exactly like this. He said, one day I was sleeping and then the alarm clock rang. And then I woke up. My eyes were awake. And then I smiled. And then I took the toothbrush and chicky, 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 chicky. I brushed my teeth. And then I felt so happy. And now I love my parents so much. And I want to become something great. Every bloody word had a gesture. And I was just looking at him and was like, man, seriously, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And then 
His father said, no, 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 there are a lot of points for gestures. And so then I asked him, what do you want me to do? Can you tell me how he can do it differently? Because if he does it differently, then he'll get more points. And can you tell him how to go one end of the stage to another end of the stage? You know, the problem is there's a difference between speaking. There's a difference between talking. There's a difference between communication. There's a difference between, you know, drama and stupidity. And this is now moving to a borderline of just trying to get marks in some stupid judge's sheet, okay? Just to impress them. And then they get this trophy, which makes them feel good. Listen, I've got around 800 trophies and certificates from, you know, from my school, college, everything else. When I was without a job, okay, I, I mentioned it, 800 trophies, and I never got a job. So you know what I did after being unemployed for years and years? I took all these trophies, all these certificates, I threw them in the bloody dustbin because they meant jack shit, okay? So that is how much of, you know, uh, power, how much of uh, credibility these certificates and trophies have. Last if not the least, last if not the least. These very judges who are there, judges of this Toastman, check their credibility. In fact, I would challenge you, ask in one of those table topics, you know, where they have to speak impromptu, the judges... Ask those judges to stand and deliver a table topic. Ask the judges of a humorous contest to stand and deliver a humorous speech. Ask the judges of an international speech contest deliver a speech. In fact, I challenge you, ask your DTMs, the ones who flash all these badges and all this stuff, ask them to craft a world-class speech and give it to you. I can write and give you, most of them are dummies, the idiots. They... They don't even know how to craft a speech if their life depended on it. In fact, one of the DTMs, I, I was invited, this was the last time I went, a couple of years ago. The guy comes on stage and the speaker praises him. He's an amazing speaker, he's a great speaker. He has, oh, so many accolades and blah, blah. He's a DTM and blah, blah, blah. He comes. So this guy comes, he comes there, he comes to the suit. Once upon a time, I built a trap, a mouse trap. And the mouse went to the trap. And there's so much fucking accent, there's so much of drama. I just looked at myself, what the hell are you doing? And then after he finished his speech, he was doing this gesture, his lying down, this and that. Everyone, the people, wow, what an amazing speech. And then the evaluator comes and says, what an amazing speech, what fantastic body language, what the English accent was superb. And it was, oh my goodness, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I've seen ridiculous speeches, absolutely ridiculous speeches, and this was one of them. You know, the, the thing is, here in the Middle East, most of the guys who join the Source Masters, they are failures in their personal life. That's why they come to meet women and they come to touch others and that's what they are doing. Uh, but they'll never tell you about it. How I know? You know, they come and talk to me. The other ones are useless in their workplace. They're treated like shit. So that's why they come to Toast Masters. So everyone's applauding. Wow. They give them importance. Most of them have nothing else to do because they're stingy to the core. That's why if you go to some of these meetings, they stink like... Especially our Indians, I, I'll tell you, they can't even afford a deodorant. And because you have to spend only 800 bucks, that's why you have a, you know, one year membership. So that's the cheapest club you can get through free snacks and meet people and feel important and special. And, uh, you, you know, these guys don't have a vision. They don't have anything. That's why they come and that's why they stay there. Because there they can play the politics, you know. There they are feeling important. There they have something else to do. Because if you actually look at it, most of them have never read a book. They have never done any research. They don't know how to craft a speech. They don't know how to do anything worthwhile in their lives. And they'll remain the same as they are. So if you go and visit them after 10 years, the same shitty way of speaking, the same style of speaking, it's, it's just the same. They never change. So this is me, Roy Masiro, speaking to you about the current, you know, the current drawbacks that we have in Toastmasters, especially in the Middle East. And I'll tell you, it's pathetic. It's never going to change. They're going to remain the same as they forever were. In fact, the audacity of some of them I went to one of these clubs where they had invited me to come and speak to them and give them pointers on professional speaking because I make a living being a professional trainer. I wore jeans and t-shirt and I went there with my Apple and you know MacBook Pro and I was reading, giving them points. And these are points for which I get paid a hell lot of money. After I gave them, one of them came and told me that he would give me feedback. Fine, he came up and said, and he got, uh, Mr. Louis, Louis. My name is Loy Macedo. Mr. Louis Machido, uh, I want to give feedback that, you know, uh, your speech was excellent, excellent, super points. But uh, suggestion, uh, please, you should wear suit and tie, suit and tie, and don't look at your laptop because I felt you were nervous because you're looking at your laptop. So, and show some 
gestures, some gestures and vocal variety up and down and look everywhere and walk around and then it will be a great speech. I just want to tell him idiot, you know. I'm, 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 I'm not coming here for drama, I'm here to educate you. So what's bloody wrong with you? What's, what's wrong with these people? You know, that's the problem with these people. They, they don't use their common sense. That's what is wrong with these people. So what I'm trying to tell you is, you know, if, if you really want to, okay, improve your confidence, fine, go there. Go improve your confidence, learn a little bit more. But please don't allow ignorance. Don't allow ignorance to infiltrate you. And remember, keep this in mind. If you want to become great, surround yourself with great minds. Re learn, read, grow, try to evolve, try to improve. And that's the only way you can move forward. But if you are looking to be a big dog in a small backyard, well, there are plenty of these clubs around. And sad to say, this is what you'll end up. So Lloyd from LloydMercedo.com and LloydMercedo sharing with you the massive drawbacks that Toastmasters have in the Middle East. Let me know what you think. Love to hear from you. Goodbye for now.